Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about a hog. Okay, so we have bought meat in bulk before, but we've only bought, we bought a quarter of a cow last year and we have loved having all of that meat in our freezer and we wanted to go ahead and get a hog this year. So what you guys see right here is half of a hog. Before I show you guys what comes in half of a hog when you get one, I really wanna to talk to you guys about why we wanted to order half of a hog or buy, even buy a big chunk of meat like this, either a quarter, a half of beef or even cow, or beef or even pork. Um, so the main reason is, is that when you buy from a local farmer that you trust, the animals are going to be from more of like an ethical standpoint. They're going to be happier animals. They're going to taste better. The omega, the um, healthy omegas are going to be more present than the unhealthy omega fats. So all around, you're getting an animal that is ethically raised. So it's a happy animal, which is going to taste better. And we really want to support those farmers who are doing it the right way. Eventually, we would love to be able to raise our own pork and beef, but in the season right now where we are, we can't do that. So the next best thing is to support other families who have the right mindset and are doing it that way as well. When you do buy either a half, a side of an animal, it's going to be more money up front, yes, and that's kind of hard to kind of think of because typically when you go grocery shopping, you're not buying this much meat, like your year's worth of meat up front. You're just buying what you need for the week. So it is kind of a mindset change to buy all of your meat up front, um, but long term, it's going to save you a lot of money in the long haul. So as you guys know, buying meat from a local farmer that is raised the right way, more ethically raised, is going to be more expensive than buying meat, say, at the grocery store because it's factory farmed, um, they're mass produced, they're um, shoved full of all those growth hormones, antibiotics, unhealthy feed, things that they don't normally eat, and who knows if they even walk out on grass or even see the sunshine. So we really want to put our money with people that we support and practices of farming that we support. So it means a lot. Also love that it encourages you knows um, to cook different cuts of meat that you normally wouldn't buy. So when you think of pork, you typically think of like ham, bacon, and then some pork chops, right? But when you buy your animal in bulk, you also get things like the kidney, the hocks, um, what else do you get? Oh, the feet. So all these different things that you're learning, pork butt, like all these things that you're having to learn how to cook. And it also tests you as a chef or a cook of your house to cook things differently. So I really love that. I love cooking. So I love having different cuts of meat that I normally wouldn't buy to be able to learn how to cook them a different way or cook different cuts of meat and use the whole animal. So when you find your farmer, you'll, you'll order the, the, the side of the animal and then they'll call you and they'll do what's called a cut sheet where you get to customize how thick you want certain meats cut, how you want them cut, if you want them cured, if you want sausage, if you want flavoring and seasonings in them. So you really get to customize however you want it. So for example, pork chops, we like ours about an inch um, thick or our hams, the hams is a big, big butt. You don't, for our family, since we have three little kids and just my husband and I, we don't need like a 13 pound butt ham. We like to cut ours up and have several hams. So you guys can customize how big you want the meat, how much you want it weigh and how you want it packaged. So I really, really love that aspect of it. Our, um, our we got a half of a hog and ours ended up being 94 pounds of meat. Okay, so when you go to order it, they're gonna give you a hanging weight and you pay per price per pound according to the hanging weight. Now what that means is the animal is basically hanging up, it's you know, it's been butchered, processed, before processing, so it's been butchered and it's hanging up and they weigh it with the bones and all, all the fat and all of that on there. That's what you're gonna pay. So when you are ordering like your cuts and stuff, make sure you ask for the fat and the skin because you're paying for it anyways. And why not use it or find a use for it if you're paying for it, right? So breeds, different breeds can produce different results. So some types of, some breeds of pigs will produce more lard and more belly, which is like your bacon, and other breeds don't necessarily produce as much lard and bacon. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you guys what comes with half of a hog when you order one. Okay, so these right here are all of our hams. We got three hams in this one. And then these are all of our roasts. So we have um, picnic, two picnics, actually three picnics. Here's our third one here. And then this right here 
is a Boston butt. I believe we got three Boston butts as well because we had her cut it down for us. Um, here are the ribs right back here and then a ton of pork chops. So we have this one here. This is pork chops. These are pork chops all over here. They're all bone in pork chops and we'll save those bones and make some bone broth out of it as well. I also ordered another pack of bones because we do lots of bone broths in this house. Here's some pig skin that I can cook up. Here's the pork kidney, ham hocks, and then the two feet right here. It'd be really good to add in the broth. I've even seen people pickle it, so I'll figure out what to do with those. And then here's the leaf lard fat. What's not shown here is the call fat that I will use for wrapping chicken or even our rabbits and baking it, and then also the bacon. It's Let's just touch really quick on where the heckle and jekyll you're gonna put all of this meat like where you're gonna put it all so i'm gonna show you guys how to st how to put it away and um what we use for our freezer so right now we have two garage freezers we just got a second one because we're getting another quarter of a cow this week so that's super exciting if you guys want to hear more about that or see what comes in a quarter of a cow i can definitely do a video for you on that but i want to show you guys what i use to store our um, our bulk meat in our freezer so keep it nice and organized so I have can see what our inventory of meat is. Okay, so I have these bins here that I got from the dollar store. You can get them from Target, Hobby Lobby, whichever you want. Um, basically, they're just little plastic bins and this helps me organize my meat. So I use this one for the quarter of the cow and then I use these now for the pork as well. So little bins like this where you can organize them according to cuts and just keep yourself organized as far as what's in your freezer. So it can come in big, medium, and small. So I can show you guys a picture of what our freezer looks like after I've already organized everything too. So, so here is what one of our, like our main outdoor freezer looks like. This is all we have left for a quarter of a cow. So, so thankful that we are getting more. Oh, and then we have some more beef liver left over. Glad that we are getting our cow this week. So. So I'll show you guys. So these are our roasts, our picnics, and our Boston butts. This is all of like the extra stuff, like the fat, the hocks, the kidney, and all that. These are all of our hams, and then our pork chops and our ribs. Down there's just water bottles that we use for the rabbits to cool them down. This I usually keep down here for our bones. I usually have a ton more bones that we get in bulk from the farmer for uh, beef bone broth. So that's usually my bone rack, and then. Usually it's just full of like vegetables and then obviously breast milk. And then I usually have this row down here full of bone broth because we freeze it instead of canning. But what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is move all of this pork and move it into this stand-up freezer that we just got and make this like our, our beef freezer since it's bigger. A quarter of a cow is much bigger than half of a hog. So this is what it looks like guys, all nice and organized. All right guys, so there you have it. This is what comes in half of a hog when you order it from your local farmer. So tell me below guys, have you ordered half a hog or a whole hog? And tell me about your experience down below in the comments. Bye guys, see you next time.